have built this six and a half foot spiral auger by hand. I bent this metal around a tree. But wait, I have also built this nine foot shaftless auger spiral out of rebar the same way. I bent it around a tree. But what are all these things for? Come with me, let's figure out. All right, so let us break down how this airlock continuous feed system will work for the plastic to fuel reactor. We will use this piece of plastic as an example. And of course, somebody donated the plastic with a shit still in it, corn syrup still in the plastic. We should not be eating this anyway, but whatever. So first of all, this valve here will open, boom. The plastic will fall, be loaded in, fall down. The valve will close, boom. Now right here, there's gonna be continuous auger blades, shaftless auger blades that go from here all the way down. So the plastic will fall down, the auger blades will spit, it's gonna travel, 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 travel down the stream right here to the sight glass, we'll be able to see it. And then we open uh, the vacuum port and the vacuum pump right here will suck out all the air. Suck out all the air from that top bit right there. Now there's no more air in here, okay? Yes, no more air. Next, the plastic will then have to fall down, but we must first open this valve. Boom, this valve is open, and this valve is open to the chamber. Now make sure this valve is closed so that way no air is being sucked in, right? But this valve is open to the chamber, and now the plastic is right here, the auger blades turn back on, boom, 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 all the uh, shredded plastic loading falls down. Boom, 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 air keeps it airtight, keeps the machine under vacuum. So my very first step was to move the machine forward because this continuous upgrade to the machine is going to increase the length of the machine by about seven foot um, in the, which direction would that be? The horizontal direction. So I had to move the machine forward and also a little bit to the side more. And I initially was trying to put it on these pavers. That was a huge mistake of mine. It was just too hard to get them level with the gravel. Uh, it's not even gravel, just these river stones on the ground. And this machine's so heavy, I'm doing this by myself. This machine's at least between, I'd say, if I had to guess, like 500 pounds minimum. And uh, it's just really tough to roll. I was so sore after this, so sore, you know. Um, and I couldn't get it right, so I ended up just keeping it on the ground anyway. You know, sometimes a simple solution is the solution. So anyways, let's get back to what we were working on with the blades. This is my microwave. Let's take a look at what this entails, being able to load plastic in the machine continuously. Well, firstly, major efficiency upgrades. Now, let's go over how I got this to work. So this is utilizing a double airlock system, similar to what's used in spacecraft and such. So we have double valve airlock system, and there'll be able to be a vacuum pulled in this chamber section here that will be able to let us load plastic in, then get all the oxygen and air out, and then load plastic into the actual machine itself. So we got a valve here, 
sight glass, then this auger and feet chamber system and a valve up here, as well as my vacuum loading system at the very top. So anyway, like this say, for example, low plastic in, this valve is open, plastic falls down, goes in here, you can see I got my auger blades in here, and they're gonna spin. You gotta get the motor and stuff, but they're gonna spin the shredded plastic down. Shredded plastic is gonna roll its way down, then fall its way down into the reactor after a vacuum is pulled, and that, that valve is closed, so that way it's completely airtight, oxygen free. Now the machine will not have to get up to temperature over and over again every time we want to load plastic in. We'll be able to operate it at high temperatures the whole time through, improving efficiency by absolute tons. And take a look at these blades. These shaftless auger blades work at 100% created and cut and bent by hand, welded by hand. And uh, they'll fit perfectly, fit like a glove. I just gotta get the motor and stuff installed. So thank you guys for your support, your donations, all your suggestions. We got it coming. It's been a lot of hard work, a lot. Cause on top of all this, I had to rebuild these uh, main shaftless auger rebar blades inside the machine, but we got it coming along. It's looking great. I have got to take a moment to express my gratitude to every single member on the YouTube channel. You can become a member today by just hitting join now. I'm also overly grateful for all the Patreon members. Thank you all so much on Patreon for your continued support for what I do. Those of you that want to support me, you can go to naturejab.com slash donate. I also have merch as well, or you can also become a Patreon member or YouTube channel member. Our GoFundMe recently just broke $10,000, so thank you all very much for that. And my last announcement is that February 15th at the Buckhead Library in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm going to be having a meet and greet. I'll be giving away 10 shirts of free merch of my latest merch design. So if you guys are in Georgia, go to naturejab.com slash meet to RSVP for this meet and greet. If you want to donate plastic to me, some... What? If you want to donate your plastic to me, somebody who will actually recycle it, not like these companies and just throw it in the ocean, well, the address is on the screen. In the meantime, I like to thank every single person who has, who has donated plastic to me. So let's go. Thank you, Edward, for the plastic. Thank you, Joe, for the plastic. Thank you, Pluky Prince, for the 3D print fat box of plastic. Thank you, Joe, again, for the plastic. Oh, another box of 3D prints. Pluky Prince, thank you. Oh, Pluky Prince, you guys have donated me some fat boxes of plastic. Thank you to Pluky Prince for the 3D printer plastic waste. We can now do a run of just 3D printer plastic once the machine is up and running again when I'm done with the upgrades, obviously. Your boy's been to work. But thank you, Pluky Prince. Thank you, Joe. Thank you to Edward as well. And like I said, guys, send me your plastic. The address is on the screen. I will take it and I will actually recycle it. So next we have the motor and gearbox that need to come off the machine. I know chronologically this video is a little bit all over the place, but I wanted to get the meat and the potatoes in the first six minutes because that's usually what the retention time is for most people. So I want everybody that stayed for the first six minutes to get the gist. All you that are more technical and are going to stay to see the rest of the stuff, you're here now. So getting this motor and gearbox off and getting the blades out of the machine sucks every time it's horrible even when i lube up the shaft with all the baby oil i got i still gotta tap this thing hundreds of thousands of times it feels like to get this gearbox to come off and i'm always so sore after all this it's so much physical labor to, to anything to do with these shafts and gears and and uh just everything with the machine is a lot um with the blades the auger blades but i finally got it off Sometimes I swear guys, I feel like I can't, like this stuff will never come off, I swear. See the Allen key fail? Just happens to be my luck. C'est la vie, you know, this life. You, you, you're working on things, you're gonna drop it at the least convenient time. So after I got the motor and gearbox off, I got the shaft seal off. Um, it keeps it, you know, airtight rotating shaft. And then now the next hard part, pushing the blades out. Now you see all this kind of smoke coming out? That's because the machine, I warmed it up. Uh, with microwaves before I did this trying to make it easy for myself. You see I am PPE'd up I have the face shield. I have the respirator everything. You do not want to breathe any of this in But I was hoping that you know just having the machine a little bit hot probably about 200 degrees C all around all the way around would help 
And it did, you know, I got the blades half out, but lord, I was in for way more than I thought. You see, I, I started to employ guerrilla tactics, hitting this thing with a sledgehammer with a, uh, a pipe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> metal pipes to kind of form a little spear to help push it, man, everything. It just was not coming out past this halfway mark, and I'm like... What can I do? And the only thing I could think of was more heat. So I threw a piece of cardboard set on fire inside the machine. And I didn't think the machine would be so flammable. But what ended up happening was the cardboard um, eventually got hot enough to catch the residual carbon. from Carbon black, which is cold pretty much. From the plastic, you know, the carbon black is going to burn reactor with oxygen. You see how hot that stuff burns. Literally, it's red hot. Now, fortunately, this machine is made for high temperatures. I didn't have to worry about anything being damaged. But I took all the insulation off because it kept catching on fire, the little paper layer. But this was the only alternative. Like, guys, I'm telling you, I tried everything else. I tried to heat it up with just microwaves. I did not want to have to do this, but these blades just were not coming out. Desperate times call for desperate measures, but I ended up getting the fire out and we moved on to the next step. So the blades to me plastic in the fuel reactor have got clapped again. And now I've got to fix them again. But it's all right, frustrating, but all right nonetheless. Life is all about learning experiences and I'm going to build them this time stronger than ever. They're going to be bloody tough as steel. Well, they are steel, rebar, nonetheless. You know, we already got some on the way over here I've been working on. Don't let me tickle your tits with the feathers of progress too soon here. Let's go back in time and see how I've got to this point here. So this was the next step of absolute torturous physical labor, having to bend this rebar around the tree and I mean anybody that has worked with rebar you know yourself rebar is probably one of the easiest to bend metals of all the things all the different alloys but it's still tough um because it's still metal you know it, rebar is relatively soft but that's like me saying granite is relatively soft compared to you know um what's a harder rock than, than granite I don't know the only person that probably knows so much about hardness and rocks is Diddy himself, right? Nonetheless, it was a lot of physical labor to do this. Um, but this time, I actually got a tree of a really small diameter because to pull the blades off, I actually expanded them a little bit so that way they would come off and be the perfect diameter once they were expanded. So I didn't have to cut them off. But speaking of cutting them off, I did have to end up cutting the smaller auger blades I had to bend, which unfortunately, just the way the spiral was, I couldn't just get it off. So I had to cut this off. So, hey, every tree that has given me the opportunity to do this, I thank you. We thank you to all the trees. I know I... Right, so I've done the same, but for a smaller diameter auger here, that's gonna go inside of the continuous feed system to rotate the plastic down that lot. So, same thing, potato, potato, and uh, yeah, let's get to welding these things. And we will begin. So I do this little roll test with the blades as I'm welding it because it lets me know and see inconsistencies and potential gaps. If it rolls pretty well then for the most part that lets me know that every single flight is going to be, you know, around the same height. But unfortunately bending it around a, a tree that's not a perfect circle and doing it by hand you'll never get it all perfect. So you know, here's the thing, you guys are actually going to kind of see. I was starting to weld in supports across the entirety of the blades because I didn't want them to break like the last ones. They're not break, but just get misshapen. So I, I put in uh, horizontal supports throughout the whole thing, but since this is done by hand and nowhere near perfect, nowhere near precise, or the tolerances are just garbage, I actually had to end up removing every single support, cut them out. I didn't show that part on camera, 
but all the supports had to come out because the blades would just not spin properly in the machine with these supports because some areas are just bigger diameters than others you know and and one day we're gonna get these blades professionally done personally i don't know the good thing is they're a modular feature of the machine so it can always be upgraded but at the same time i kind of am thinking would it even be worth making the blades of this machine um professional like that or am i as well just wait until the next machine right but i don't know we'll see i've been in talks with a few people about 3d printing the blades um you know just the very nature of a shaftless auger blade of course is always going to be weaker than a shafted auger but there's a reason we make this auger uh shaftless but take a look at this thing when i have all the supports man this thing is sturdy looks like a gatling gun ready to kill some zombies bitch west side bitch gonna kill some zombies west side Looks like a Gatling gun, don't it? And it, yeah, it's sturdy. It rolled well too, but unfortunately, like I said, it just <laughs> not good. So next, the small blades here. Uh, these were actually really frustrating to build. And the reason why is because the diameter of the pipe in which they need to fit in is a four inch uh, tri-clamp spool. It's just such a tight diameter. I had to just keep going, you know, kind of dry fitting as I went, but we got it working. So once the new blades were put inside, I had to go ahead and put the gearbox and motor back on. So this is the gearbox, and then right here is the shaft seal. A lot of people wonder, how do you keep a rotating shaft airtight? You have to use this thing, which has a rubber butt that presses against a metal part of the machine, and then a ceramic face that is uh, pressed against another ceramic face, and then there's a rubber sleeve that goes around the shaft itself and keeps it airtight and vacuum tight. Here you go. Here are the blades. Thank you all very much for watching, and there's a lot of more work to do, but we got a huge chunk and the biggest of the physical labor out of the way. So here's to the machine operating continuously sooner than ever.